What is on your mind that you want to talk about and get advice on? Secret conversations with a teenager. My husband has been chatting to a girl for months behind my back. We are around 40 and she is a teenager. I really don't know how to make sense of this situation and thought it might be a good idea to ask for advice here before I do something stupid. My husband and I have been happily married for over 10 years. In that time he's never done anything to make me suspect he was not being faithful to me. He really is a wonderful man and I consider myself extremely lucky to have found him, which is why the current situation confuses me so much. A couple of days ago he forgot his phone in my handbag after we went shopping. I went to have lunch with a friend afterwards, and wanted to use his phone to call home, and tell him I still have his phone. But when I unlocked his phone I noticed he had Facebook Messenger installed on his phone. My husband is not the social media type so I was curious, and opened the app and my heart sank. There were lots of messages from a woman, I felt like I was going to have a panic attack. She is his only friend, he used a fake name, and from the chat log it appears as though they chatted somewhere else before she convinced him to create a Facebook account. I spent the next couple of hours reading through the entire chat history. Turns out for months he's been talking to a teenage girl who lives in Georgia, we're in Vermont. The reason I'm so confused about what to do is because nothing sexual appears to be happening. They texted about all sorts of things and the times she tried to steer the conversation in a sexual direction, he shut it down pretty quickly, and changed the topic. He also wasn't trying to hide the fact that he's married. On the contrary, some of the things he told her about me was actually very sweet. Having read their entire chat history, I'm fairly sure this girl is smitten with my husband although nothing overtly inappropriate appears to be happening between them. What bothers me so much about this is the fact that we're normally very open with one another and he's never once mentioned this to me. I really want to confront him over this, even if it is just to find out what's going on. But I did invade his privacy by reading his messages without his permission and I'm scared it's going to damage our relationship if he finds out I did this. I really don't know what to do here. Just to clarify, the messages she sent him were in eliciting sex. For example, at one stage they spoke about relationships, and she mentioned her ex-boyfriend tried to pressure her into it. He told her any guy that respected her would not pressure her into it and then change the topic. However, from the way that she constantly tries to flatter, and compliment him it feels like she's very much into him. I obviously don't have the chat log with me so I can't recall verbatim everything they said, since there were literally thousands of messages, but nothing jumped out to me as being inappropriate. They spoke about everything from school to politics, and art. He is just being himself. I don't remember him mentioning his age however, so I don't know if she knows how old he really is. They appear to be speaking on a regular basis, every second day or so, and mostly when I'm not around. I've decided I need to talk to him about this. It's seating me up inside and I won't be able to let it go. I'm already literally losing sleep over it. I'm going to try my best to muster up the courage to speak to him about this. I'm just so scared that my entire world is about to come crashing down. I really love him to death, but this is a side of him I've never seen before. Should I reach out to the man responsible for my brother's death? I am a female in my early 40s. He is 70-ish, and my brother was 8. DLDR, my older brother was killed in a horrible car accident when I was a kid. I've always wanted to talk to the man who was driving the truck that hit us, and I've found his contact information in the phone book. Would it be wrong for me to reach out to him? My older brother Aiden was killed in a car accident when I was 5 years old. Aiden was 8 years old. My mother, two brothers, and I were in our car in a left turn lane. A dump truck driver, Mitch, ran a red light, and hit us. Aiden was killed instantly. My younger brother, and mother were critically injured, but survived. I had minor physical injuries, but was mentally scarred from the experience, and seeing Aiden laying dead on the side of the road. Mitch was the one who pulled me from our car, and I remember how freaked out he was. Mitch did not have a driver's license because it had been revoked from too many DUIs. He was not drunk when he was driving that day. He was driving a dump truck for a landscaping company, and the dump truck was found to be faulty on many levels, he had run the red light because the brakes did not work. In any case, my parents sued, and won a financial settlement. Mitch served about two weeks in the workhouse, but that was the extent of his punishment. The accident was in the mid-1980s. Throughout my adulthood, I've kind of wanted to talk to Mitch. I'm not even sure what I want from him, just to talk about what happened since I was so young and I thought talking to him would help provide some closure. I wouldn't mind an apology, but would not necessarily expect that. Thanks to the magic of the internet, I found his contact information online in the phone book. I've been thinking about reaching out for the past couple of months, thinking that sending a letter would be best. Do you think it would be wrong for me to reach out to him? Also, I have been through therapy, about the accident, and about other traumas. 
I never addressed Mitch specifically, except for what my mother coached me to talk about regarding him. I'm not currently in therapy, but since I've been having old memories and feelings popping up recently, I should get back in therapy when I can get health insurance. Would we be unreasonable for eloping when the wedding is this weekend? My girlfriend and I had planned to get married on Saturday. We wrapped up all our planning around Halloween. All that was left was to ring some time this week, and make sure everything was running smoothly. She called the venue, and the person she spoke to asked her to confirm some changes she'd apparently made. My girlfriend had no clue what he was talking about, and he reminded her of all the changes that had been put in recently. We had not approved any of these changes. We were able to get some of it put back the way it was, but there are some things that we couldn't change back at such short notice. The venue forwarded us the emails asking for the changes so we could look over them. Our communication was being done via an email account we created solely for wedding stuff, and the email address which asked for the changes is the exact same address, except two letters are switched round. The venue is very apologetic for not calling us directly, but can only fix so much of it at this stage. We think we know what happened. The whole time we were planning the wedding we got pushback from both sets of parents, and the stuff they had the biggest issues with have all been changed. I'm willing to bet that all of this was related to at least one of our respective parents. We don't know anyone who would want to F with us or the wedding this badly except our parents, who got pissy when we told them they couldn't financially contribute to the wedding because they were trying to trade their money for whatever wedding stuff they wanted. Right now the stuff that we wanted that is still in this wedding is my suit, the venue, and the DJ. My girlfriend has gone to pick up her dress, and she's not heard from the shop, so we're assuming that hasn't changed. I'm calling round everyone, and it looks like the menu has been changed, as has the guest list, and the cake. We paid for the wedding we had planned, and it looks like any additional costs from the changes, such as the extra people, were paid for by someone else, but they wouldn't give me any of the card info for legal reasons. We probably won't be speaking to our parents again after this, unless one of them owns up in which case we'll just stop speaking to that one. But this feels like a joint effort as it's dealt with both sets of parents complaints. Before my girlfriend left to get the dress, she requested I get advice, as we are seriously considering eloping. We have the marriage certificate here, the honeymoon is unaltered, and exactly what we wanted, and there's a few appointments we could make between now, and Saturday at the town hall to get the certificate legally signed slash filed. However, we now have around 200 people attending this wedding in 3 days. Our original guest list was about 100 including families, and plus ones. People have booked hotels, planes, trains, and are coming from other countries to be here. None of these people have done anything to us, and would be getting caught in the crossfire if we were to elope instead. Would we be the assholes? Update. I posted in the group chat I have with all four parents that someone has been screwing with the wedding, we found the email they used, and we'd be tracking the IP address to a device, and location, this was all absolute bullcrap, we don't even know how to find an IP address. As soon as I said we'd be tracking the email they all started pointing fingers, and accusing each other. It looks like all four of them were in on it together. Still not sure what we're doing about the wedding, but all four parents are uninvited. We're thinking that we might elope for the ceremony, and then have the reception as planned, it's all the same party slash venue, and we won't get money back because of the number of people who are coming from all over the place. Update. My mother made up the email, and her mother helped replan the wedding. We knew they had been meeting for lunch, but we didn't realize what they were doing in that time. Caterer, and baker can fix the menu, and cake, and the clothing is all safe. Then you think they might be able to fix the decorations, and the parents have paid for the changes. The ceremony itself is the same. We were worried it had been changed from a non-religious ceremony to a religious one, but it hadn't, so we'll probably just go through with the day as it currently stands, with a couple changes. We've decided that we will meet up before the ceremony with some close friends, no parents, to sign the certificate so we're not doing it surrounded by strangers, then have the ceremony, and rings as planned with everyone invited, go to the reception with everyone who has been invited because innocent people have paid out money to be here and then afterwards we will go for drinks with the people who were at the signing earlier in the day. The venue offered us security, but we're not going to uninvite the additional people or turn them away, and as for our parents, we're not sure. The options are either invite them, and let them deal with their invitees so we don't have to, then cut them out of speeches, and just don't acknowledge them all day, and after the reception cut contact, or just don't let them come, in which case we will need the security the venue offered because I can't see them just not going. Venue have also said to pretty much just leave it with them, they'll put what they can back to what we'd planned, and they're prepared to offer a partial refund based on what they can't fix, so if they fix 50% of it, 
they're prepared to refund 25% for the 50% they can't fix. Update, the final one. We had a small private thing where we signed the certificate with our closest friends, then we went to the planned ceremony, and had a short service where we exchanged rings, followed by a reception, we told the parents that they were not invited, told the venue they weren't invited, the venue put what was essentially a bouncer at the door, and they still got in, they don't seem to understand what they did wrong as they boasted to their guests that they planned this, but we changed it to what you're currently seeing, and their own guests ended up being the ones to tell them how screwed up that was, they were pretty much shamed by their guests into leaving about an hour after they arrived. Also, half their guests didn't show, it was probably about 60 to 70% our guests in the end, and we definitely had the majority, food, including cake, was sorted out, but not decor, and venue are refunding us 50%, which was going to be 30%, but then they let the parents in. We only spoke to them once to tell them that because after completely freaking up our wedding plans, they then couldn't honor one simple request to not come, they would not be hearing from us, potentially ever again. And if they contacted us that would change to definitely never hearing from us again. We are currently in the cab on our way to get drinks with the same friends who were at the signing earlier, and then off on our honeymoon. Mother-in-law feeds deer with my stuffing bread. We invited mother-in-law, father-in-law, brother-in-law, and his wife sister-in-law for Thanksgiving. Last night I ripped apart a couple of loaves of bread, and left them on a bowl on the counter so they would get stale overnight, so I could make the stuffing. I came downstairs this morning to find mother-in-law, and sister-in-law in the kitchen drinking coffee so I made myself a cup, and decided to commence cooking. However, my bread was gone, every last crumb. Turns out mother-in-law was so entranced by the deer in our yard, and thought well they looked hungry so she took the bowl, and sprinkled the contents around the yard, but why did you do that, I asked, now I can't make my stuffing, 7-eleven is open, they sell bread, okay I said, I'll need two loaves, she responds, you want me to go, I say, well, you're the one who fed it all to the deer, at which point she started to cry, and ran into the guest room, and didn't emerge until two hours later with red eyes, and a woe is me attitude, and her sons, and husband are walking on eggshells around her, and being solicitous toward poor little mother-in-law. Manipulative bish. Update. When I last posted, mother-in-law had just emerged from hiding, and brother-in-law, father-in-law, and husband were kissing her ass. Sister-in-law and I were pretty repulsed by their attention being paid to Joe Casta so we just went into the kitchen, opened a bottle of wine far from the maddening crowd, and started cooking dinner. An hour later, husband comes into the room, and finally asks me what happened. I told him and, of course, he said that she didn't mean to give our stuffing away, and why am I making such a big deal out of it. I let him know that I had set the stuffing bread out overnight so that it would have the crispy crust we love. Here's the rest of the conversation best as I can remember it. Dear husband, couldn't you just go out, and get more bread? Me, I'm not the one who gave away the stuffing bread plus I have an entire meal to cook. Dear husband, well, you didn't mean to be so nasty to mom about it. Me. I wasn't nasty at all, I just told her what kind of bread to get at the store. Dear husband, you know she's not familiar with the area. Note, dear husband has been stationed here for 5 years, and his parents visit several times a year. It's not a hard place to find you way around, you really hurt her feelings. Me, I didn't mean to hurt her feelings, I just needed the bread. Dear husband, did you go out, and get it? Me, no, I have been busy, that's why I asked her. Dear husband, fine, I'll go out and get it. What a guy, right? He leaves, and 45 minutes later returns with a food lion bag. He couldn't remember what kind of bread I asked for, Italian bread. Is it that hard to remember? So he bought three boxes of stovetop stuffing. Now, I love me some stovetop, but not at Thanksgiving. But that's exactly what we ate. Instant stuffing. Looks like that vile woman won this round. Note, dear husband is awesome except when he's around his mother. It's always been a little weird but this was definitely the most ridiculous episode. I don't understand how this man is smart enough to run a nuclear reactor, but turns into a 180 pound glob of jello when it comes to her. Another note, he will not be getting any for a while. Am I the unreasonable one for making a complaint against a nursery worker due to how she reacted to my wife picking our kid up? My wife and I have two kids, a daughter, and a son. My wife is an essential worker as she's a doctor. She works extremely long hours with hardly any days off whilst I work a typical 9 to 5 job. So I've always taken care of arranging the kids for school, and care etc. Well with lockdown, I've been able to homeschool my daughter. But since my wife is an essential worker, 
my son's nursery has still been able to take him and so I have dropped him off there as normal as even though I'm homeschooling my other kid, I'm fitting that around me working from home. It makes it easier for my son to still have his routine, and so I can do my work, and so on. Anyway, I was going to pick him up like normal, but my wife chose to do it as she was off at that time, and could actually get him. The people at this nursery know my wife as do the parents, even though she's rarely there. She was actually happy to be able to pick our son up from the nursery for once, and I thought it went fine until she came home in tears. She told me this nursery worker who has just started there didn't believe that my wife was our son's mother as this worker had only ever seen me. The other workers, and my son told her that my wife was in fact the mother, and that she wasn't a danger to my son. The new worker still didn't believe it, and said that she didn't feel comfortable with letting a three-year-old go off with a random woman she'd never seen before. My wife got really upset. And it in an upset my son as everybody was practically saying there was no danger as my wife was a mother. A few other parents got dragged into this, and backed up the other staff, and it was only through her landing that the new worker gave up. But she made a really angry comment along the lines of, maybe if you were here more often, I wouldn't have to verify your identity. My wife wants to forget it happened, but I am very angry. So the next day I picked up my son, and asked to speak to the woman in charge about the new worker. She wasn't there when it happened, but I complained and said that how my wife was treated was ridiculous, and that the coworker was out of line for her snide comment at the end. The woman wasn't happy, and I've now learned the new worker has been given a severe warning, and that her behavior is being watched. The parents who backed my wife up are torn. Some think I did the right thing as the woman didn't act professional whilst others think I'm unreasonable for interfering. My wife is annoyed as she thinks I shouldn't have said anything. I really don't know if what I did was right or wrong so am I the unreasonable one? My mother left the gas oven open while I was asleep, and went out. My mother cooked something on the gas oven, and left it there for hours then went out completely forgot about it. She locked the front door and I was asleep in my bedroom. I suddenly woke up, and found a lot of smoke everywhere in the house. The kitchen is at the back of the house so I had to go past a lot of smoke in the air without seeing anything to reach the kitchen. But I didn't do that, I didn't know where the smoke came from so I ran out of the house to the front door, and yelled for help. My mother was joining a wedding party next door. When she heard me, she immediately ran into our kitchen to turn the gas off. Then, she turned at me, and started to yell, why the hell didn't you go in, and turn it off? Are you freaking stupid or what? I was shocked, I could have died if I didn't wake up in time, and now everything is my fault. She even cried, and had my dad comfort her, and blame everything on me. I was 12 back then, but the event haunted me until now. I don't know. I need some clarification for the relationship with my mom. Does she really love me? She always told me how much she wasted her life for me, and made me think that she was always right because she is my mom. She told me she loves me and I'm the one who doesn't respect my parents, and bad luck gonna come to me because of it. Subscribe and turn on the notification bell for more stories delivered to you. Thanks for listening. See you later.